Francis, Dollar says me, old friend. Thank you ever so much for the room. You're welcome, Hugo. Anything for old friend? You know, they say the Golden Express here is the marvel, but the real marvel here is you. Don't need to it off. Have some business to attend to. Make yourself at home. Ah, oh, Conductor, I've missed you like Coke after Lent. Say, do you have any with you? Sorry, we're all a little Pepsi dude. Oh, thank you. And uh, here's something extra for the trip. Oh, the Thor! The Thor! Who's there? Stop! Look, there's been murder. Show me the body. There it is. All right. Keep the passengers out of this car. I'll let you know once I've finished my preliminary investigation. Bring all the passengers to the dining car. Hurry, time is up the essence. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be wondering why I've gathered you here. Well, I'm sorry to say that one of you has blood on her hands. Investigator, are you insinuating an act of foul play has occurred? What exactly gives you, a weak man, jurisdiction in this matter? My name is Detective Hugo Niels. I have solved over 300 cases in all seven continents. I have been knighted by Queen Victoria, recognized by the Pope, and graduated from every Ivy League school. And I have never, ever left a case unsolved. That's not even that impressive. Ever heard of Operation Kreutzer? No, what's that? It's the reason we're speaking English right now. Curse my Moira. Well, how do we know that you're not the one who killed him? I was conducting some business with the conductor last night. I must say, you seem awfully nervous, Miss Clyde Jesper. Perhaps you had a hand in the murder of Dorian Gray? Huh. How do you know my name? Uh, sorry folks, it looks like we're going to be stuck here for a while. We've been hit by the tail end of an avalanche. And it's going to take a few days for the bears to come and help dig us out. From the very start, I knew this wouldn't be an ordinary trip. Now, if you please, Miss Clyde Jesper, I must take you in for questioning. I don't want to cause a scene out there, but why in the Fury's name do you think that I, Clyde of Murder, I mean, <clears throat> Clyde of Minestra, am the murderer? If you're so eager to begin, then let's. Why are you on this trip? What exactly prompted you to take this trip to the middle of nowhere? Mr. Detective, I'll have you know that my country just finished fighting a decade-long war. And to celebrate, I decided to indulge myself in a little bit of leisure. Let's not drag this out. I know the truth, and you know the truth. And I always bring the truth to light eventually. I'm impressed. How did you know I was lying? What can I say? I'm your finest. You've beaten me at my own game. Don't flatter yourself. You were never even a player. You know, Detective, life is funny. Before the Great War, I had a precious daughter. She was my beloved Sunrise. I loved her with all my heart and soul. But by the cruel hands of Moira, she was taken from me. Agamemnon. My own husband. It was he who spoiled my paradise. Yet Moira has a way of coming around to those who deserve it. And Agamemnon, he... he... I waited for my husband's return. There was a great festival, and soon after, Agamemnon returned to his business as usual, out hunting, fishing, and the like. But there was an accident. Agamemnon was caught in a fishing net, and he... he... It's okay, I understand, Clyde Minister. Now could you please tell me what your whereabouts were last night? I was drowning my sorrows and libations at the bar. You can ask the bartender, if you don't believe me. Thank you, Clyde Minister. Your testimony has been most helpful. You murderous, treacherous, butchering snake! Justice or father is upon you! Fishing accident? My foot! Apollo told me what you've done. You will pay for it. I.e., what are you doing, Orestes? Uh... Clyde Minestra, I'm gonna need you to leave. I have to talk to you for a second. Hmm. Rusty's, please sit. We have a lot to talk about. 
How dare she call herself the queen? She's an usurper and she has no right. My name is Erstes and she killed my father. She's an evil, loathsome serpentess. I am the rightful king and I've come here to take my crown. That masculine woman with the feminine man around her waist doesn't deserve half of what she has. Why, if that filthy lover of hers were to soft personalities, it would be match made in Olympus, rather Hades. Aye, that devilish snake. Where did I go wrong with that kid? From where can a snake come, but from another snake? I have the backing of Apollo. Let me tell you what really happened. It was no mere fishing accident. It was much more diabolical. The story of my father, Agamemnon, is a story of murder. I did not see it coming. Ever since that horrible day, that image has haunted me. But who am I to tell you? You're the Euro's greatest mystery solver. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to know where I was last night, I'll tell you. I was shooting the breeze with another passenger. Save your questioning. The only mother I'll, I'll be involved is in my mother's. Well, that's enough from you, Mr. Rusties. I do hope that there are no hard feelings between us. I have to treat all my suspects with the same amount of bias. I'll see you at tonight, Peter. Yes, sir. Take this list of names to the local police station and tell them that Hugo needs some help. Though nobody means, in a hurry. I'm so sorry, Detective. A fish one man listed three hands and I do. Well, sir, I do believe you owe me a drink. Please, sit. This is my yes. Warm for no. Okay, Hamlet. Did you know that cup was poisoned? What's the table one? Something rotten to the state of Denmark. I expect a vision that was you, uncle, with the wretched mother of mine, Gertrude! Hamlet, my dear nephew, what are you talking about? Sorry, detective, I apologize about my nephew. He's been acting this way for some quite some time now, after his father's ultimate demise. Oh, well, that's quite all right. Kids these days are quite a mystery. Small talk aside, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Of course! Where were you in the night of the murder, please? The night of the murder? It's hard or difficult to recall. After the wedding, but married life has been a blur. You were married? For how many years? That's a little too close to home, detective. But if you must know, our marriage is nearing the better half of an entire month. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Gertrude is Hamlet's mother, correct? Yes, she is. What of it? And what happened to her husband, Hamlet's father? Ah, my beloved brother. That poor chap was always prone to afternoon drowsiness in the palace garden. I suppose pollen allergies simply overcame that poor fool. Unfortunately, the poor boy Hamlet was stuck at the school in Wittenberg, and with the looming threat of the foreign brass army, I was forced to take the throne. I really want to, but the people insisted. Silence! The power of oyster excrement, you chink in the chain of being. Less, less, less. And I still in my physical form, I shan't hesitate to smite thee down to dust, just as thou hast done to the state of Denmark. Good detective, should I reveal the truth, swear that my bottom feeder brother never see the light of day. I swear by nothing but my little gray self. Very well, detective, I should tell you everything. Calm down, dear uncle. I know that Dorian said it's a lot done by your doing. No, 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 no. What are you doing? I'm just showing Claudius that I know. And what is it exactly that you know? What I just told you, Detective, Claudius is the one who butchered the state of Denmark. Claudius is the one who killed my father by pouring poison in his ear while he slept. It goes from my father told me. He said to kill Claudius and avenge his death. My plan is to feed Magnus and catch him off. Guard. Then I'll kill him. A ghost told you to kill your uncle. Are you sure you're not actually mad? Besides, that information is of no use to me. I'm here to solve the murder of Dorian Gray. I'll have you know my plan is foolproof. Ernest helped me fix the details last night. And I'll tell you that mockery of a man couldn't take a life if he tried. Why do you think he's going to his allies? Why do you think he killed my father in the sleep? He can't fight. He won't fight. Mm -hmm. Anything important happened last night, Conductor? Do you have any idea how long it'll take for the train to get out of the money? It was quiet last night. A little too quiet. I don't feel so good, Mr. Niels. It's never taken the bears this long to come before. 
I've had hardly any time to dwell. Well, I still have helpers of over half the passengers to interview, so I'll see you around. What are you fellas looking for? Oh no, it's nothing. <coughs> Doesn't look like nothing, it's a map! Wait a minute, how did you... Are you the famous detective we've been hearing about? And you're assuming all this just because I saw you looking at a map. That, and the fact that you left a list of suspects out in plain view. Name's Charles Trask. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. What can we help you with? Likewise. Well, as you may have noticed, your names are still on my suspect list. Would you like to clear that up with a little interview? Sounds like a plan. Should we drop by a room, or...? Uh, here would be good. Alright, Adam. You want to move and give the detective a place to sit? First question. What were you doing the night of the murder? A murder? You said a murder? I thought you were just investigating a robbery of, of some of the sort. But a murder? That's big. Unfortunately, Mr. Uh, uh, I don't quite get your name. The name's Hugo. Hugo Niels. Unfortunately, Mr. Hugo Niels, me and my brother have our eyes glued on the maps of Europe for quite some while now. And honestly, and wholeheartedly, me, all we know that we, we were either in the dining place or in our room whenever we, and wherever the murder took place. If you don't mind me asking, but what is it that you two do exactly? We're farmers turned businessmen. Our father left us a large inheritance and we made, wanted to make it a good use. And invest in land, you know? That's why we've been looking at maps, Mr. Hugo. We're scouting the countryside to see if we can find any better land than that in the States. Personally, I insisted that we use the money, but Adam insisted we take this trip. If not for us, for Kathy. I'm a map enthusiast myself. Do you mind if I take a look at your collection? Not at all. Take a look at this. Topographical hand-painted French planes. Drop $200 on it. Wow, amazing. Who's this? Oh, it's a detective. Don't you remember? Oh yeah, detective. What the fun they need? Pleasure's mine. Kathy, Mr. Hugo just cleared us as suspects. Isn't that great? Wonderful. The limit's ordeal is almost over. How many more suspects are left? A few more, including you. Me? I thought you said we were clear of suspicion. We as in the Trask brothers. Fine, what do I do in order to get clear of suspicion? An interview with me. <laughs> How long will that take? Not long. Relax, Kathy. You have nothing to hide. I'm sure it'll be over as soon as it starts. Shut up, Adam! I'm trying to think! Okay, Raymond, I agree to get interview as long as we do it in your room. Alright, let's go. I can't stand it! Then what can't you see through the facade? It is masquerading concern. That makes me sick. That hypocrite. That's a bit harsh. Adam seems like a genuinely kind soul. And you don't find many of those these days. So, where were you in the night of murder? This is you. There's no way that we could do this. Why would all these formalities? You and I both know that sweet, innocent girl like me could never dream of such a heinous act. Don't you think there's another way we could do this? Listen, I always tell my friend to leave no pebble unturned, and only a claw will allow you to do something like this. You know what, Hugo? I'm tired of being honest. I don't want to do this. I know I'm an innocent girl, and now I know that you might not be straight either. Thomas, mystery always finds me, doesn't it? Remember back at Harvard when that honor society invited me to join? And then we found out that they were involved in a series of killings and robberies. Those days were simple. Every villain was in it for either for money or power, but now... But now it's time to change a completely different past. This must be your most difficult case yet. There's someone who can help. Here's this room. That's Mr. Gray's traveling partner. I spoke with him for a bit when he boarded, but after the murder, it's as if he has disappeared. He might be able to give me some insight. Excuse me, I need to ask you a few questions. What is it? My name is Detective Hugo Niels, and I need to ask you a few questions about this murder. I've been notified that you were Dorian's friend. I do believe that you could help me solve this case. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. I've just been so overwhelmed since Dorian's death. You know, we, we really haven't been seeing eye to eye recently, but 
And, you know, I cared for him. He was kind of like my brother. I'd be happy to help. Come inside. I'm very sorry for your loss, but do you think you could tell me anything that you think would help me in this case? Well, I don't know if it'll help, but I can tell you when I first met Dorian. Perfect. It began in England, 20 years ago. I don't remember quite exactly because it was so long ago, but I remember that my, my aunt was having a dinner party and she invited both of us. She introduced us and there was a connection immediately, I could feel it. So I invited him over to my house and asked him to model for a painting. His beauty was remarkable truly amazing. I know I'm over exaggerating, but that's just how I felt. And you paint? I used to. What made you stop? It was Dorian. How so? When I painted him, he changed. After I painted Dorian, he met my friend, Lord Henry. Henry was somewhat of a loose cannon. He only did what pleased himself. And Dorian learned from that. That's how he lost his first true love. I was trying to rekindle our relationship through this trip, but after this tragedy, don't know what to do. Did Dorian have any enemies? Only his own desires. Actually, I just remembered. I have a painting. I think you might find it interesting. Oh, let's go see it. My God, it looks like the face of a man who's indulged himself for the better half of his life. I've been trying to restore it, but every night after I add the paint, it just comes off leaves this hideous being. How odd. Well, who's this? My name is Kurt, the world-renowned chef, and I'm making breakfast. We'll start with a dash of water, an onion, some salt and pepper. That's for the broth. And who are you? Are you listening? This is a quaint dish, perfectly golden and extraordinarily white. Even his, even his origins are extraordinary. Irish, English, and Roman. Would you like to try some? Of course. Try a wonderful dish. Mr. Gertz is the best chef in this side of the Congo. Delicious. If you like that, just wait until I get the main ingredient. Where is it? Where is it? The meat is so tender and precious. It's more precious than even veal. What is it? Baby spot him. <laughs> oh, you monster! Oh, you dream of doing such a heinous oh, act. I loved baby's meat. The Congo is the best place to go and hunt for it. Every morning there, I uh, would always have a fresh catch. Um, overpopulation is such a wonderful problem there. If half the population is gone, that would work wonders for everyone there. Who would even miss it? What a marvelous idea, Mr. Prince. You always know what the best thing to do is. Once you get back to England City, they'll crown you king for such indigenous ideas! But I'd rather be a god of all the ivory taken. Oh, the Thor, the Thor! <coughs> it brought me to my soul. How could it be that I've done this? I mean, just god it would be corrupt and devilish. What was that? That scream? It was just like the guy of the murder. Hugo, I have a message for you. You, help this man. Basil, you, help this man. Who's screaming? Wait, this sounds familiar. Conductor, wake everyone up. Got it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long three days, but I believe I've solved this case. The killer was none other than Dorian himself. Dorian was obsessed with self-indulgence to the point where he could not control himself. His interior, his soul, aged measurably. His exterior remained beautiful. This picture of Dorian Gray served both to entrap and preserve his soul. Here in this train, fate transpired to send a message. I have read through your histories, your personal stories, your real stories, and I know that this murder was meant to show you this lot of depraved humans to fix your evil ways. Claudius, you killed your brother in Hamlet. You planned to murder Claudius. Clytemnestra, you killed your husband and the rest will attempt murder on you. Adam, you've always shown up your brother, and Charles, you've taken your anger out on him. Kathy, we probably shouldn't even talk about what you've done right now, but you, Kurtz, murderer of innocent lives in the Congo, heretic and a baby eater, you all need to understand that you have a choice in your actions. 
I sentence all of you to learn and follow Tim Schill, that thou mayest change.